Welcome to the friendliest campus in the South. Shotgun, Blanchard, one back set, rolls right, pressure coming, throws, middle to go, To the gym of the hills. He lifts it to left, that one's pretty well hit, Hall on the run, that ball is gone. Home of the Jacksonville State Gamecocks. This is your podcast for JSU Sports. High fly ball, center field. It is back. It's out of here. With your hosts, Brandon Owens and Cody Hooks, this is Cocky Nation. What is going on, everyone? It's another episode of Cocky Nation with your favorite two hosts, Brandon and Cody. Uh, we're excited. We got a lot of things that we want to talk about with you guys today. Um, some updates uh, to some scores uh, closer to the end of the season with basketball. Uh, we got some new updates with the beginning of softball. And uh, we also got some updates with uh, football and with uh, with the marching Southerners. So we have a lot to get through. Um, so I'm super excited to get into these things, but Brandon, why don't you go ahead and start us off with talking about what's going on with football? All right. So today it was announced that we have a home and home with Southern Miss. So the, the first game will be in 2024 in Jacksonville. And then the following game in 2025 will be in Hattiesburg. And so that brings our out of conference schedule for 2024 to be ver- uh, home against Southern Miss, home against Coastal Carolina, and at Eastern Michigan. Mm-hmm. And then in 2025, our out-of-conference schedule is at Georgia Southern, at Southern Miss, and ver- and home against Murray State. So we only have one game that we have to fill for both of those years. So our, our schedule, pending conference schedule, to be released for 2024 and 2025 – is almost complete. Well, I I like this. I like this. Uh, I do too. Uh, I do too. I think it, the fact that um, number one, it's not too far. Uh, mm-hmm. Number two, um, I think you'll see a lot of Gamecock fans go to it. I think this is a really mm-hmm. good uh, setup for us as we continue getting into the FBS um, system. Um, so I'm I'm excited for that, especially since uh, we're going to start with the first game at home, and then we'll play Hatt- in Hattiesburg in 2025. Um, and now, this isn't just your run of the mill group of five team. This is a historic football team, mm-hmm. and so the fact that we have a home and home with them is huge. Yes. Now I am excited for that. I've already, I think we talked about it before in 2024 when we played Coastal Carolina. Um, I, I really do like the fact that we're playing them again. I think the last time we played them was in 2016. Um, uh, when one by played, one point, we won by one point. Uh, Eastern Michigan, I think, is a great. Again, these games are just good to set us up to get ready for the. Um, for the FBS, especially with the FBS mm-hmm. having so many changes with uh, with conferences and, and teams going in and out and all these different things. So I'm excited. I think this is going to be really good. Um, Murray State, not worried about them. Georgia Southern, I think this is a fantastic game. I have friends that go to Georgia mm-hmm. Southern. Um, so We used I'm, to play them all the time well, they when used we to be, first moved up to FCS. One in Georgia Southern used to be a dominant team back in the day as well. Oh my gosh, um, yes. So I, I I like this. I like the schedule. I think this is great. So that's uh that's where I'll leave my thoughts. Anything else you want to add, Brandon? Uh just hope that we possibly find a home and home with like a lower end P five. Mm-hmm. That would be that would be great. Somebody like Vandy or um, I nah, would say Van- Kansas, but Kansas is not. <laughs> Vandy won't ever play us because if Vanderbilt plays us, they know that there's a higher probability of getting beat, and then the SEC is going to have to start asking questions. So I would, I would love to have a home and home with Central Florida, but I don't think that's going to happen. Right? Uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, it depends on if uh, 
what's his name? Uh, Gus Malzahn is still there. So, but there has been some other developments that have happened uh, in association with football. Uh, this is usually what we would associate with football. And that is uh, Brandon and I, if you don't know, if you're new to the podcast, if you're new to the show, uh, Brandon and I used to be Southerners at uh, Jacksonville State. And so we have a deep, deep, deep love for the program, uh, deep love for Dr. Botterford, uh, for the entire band staff. Um, and so today, uh, well, technically at midnight today um, on February 14th, depending on when you're listening to this, uh, the Marching Southerners released their 2023 production, which is uh, titled Reflection. And yes, uh, your mind should immediately go to the Mulan song uh, of Reflection, but Reflection is more than just Mulan. So um, if you don't know, if you live under a rock, uh, this is Dr. Botiford's 30th year as the head director, director of bands at Jacksonville State. He has spent more than enough time, not only as a director, but also as a Southerner himself. And he decided to put the show into our hands. Now, I guarantee you there was probably a little bit of tweaking here and there from the directors to make sure everything mm-hmm. lined up. But uh, we talked about this earlier um, in another episode where ultimately the Southerners and all the fans got to choose and vote for what songs they wanted to be in the show to reflect his 30 years as director. So they picked a lot of shows um, and a lot of songs that are from his time. Um, so we will open up with reflection from Mulan um from there we will tran- uh transfer over to firebird which the last time we heard firebird in uh in a show was 2011 um which i'm which super was about. such a good arrangement in my opinion <laughs> It is, and I'm I'm a huge fan of Firebird. Um, you can ask Brandon; is probably one of my uh, my favorite arrangements um, in in the world. Um, and then uh, we will travel back to my time and his time. But this was like a pivotal time in, in Southerners' time. Uh, we will be playing "Fly to Paradise," which uh, was in our 2017 show "Angel Among Us." Um, This was very, very big for Brandon and I because this was during the time where, unfortunately, uh, the year prior, in 2016, uh, we did lose one of our ballerinas. um, Katie Beth Carter. Katie Beth Carter. And so she – I knew her just a little bit. um, I knew her from band camp. I I didn't really know her beyond that. Um, Right. The time that I did meet her, she – was an inspiration and just a smile to be around. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we really all just knew like the show was dedicated to her and it made everyone so emotional when we heard Mm -hmm. this song. So I'm excited that this song is going to be in. And it was um, was, honestly, it's the best intro Southerners has ever done. Literally. I'm, I I don't think most, I think some people may argue that statement, but I'm not going to. After that, we do transition. As you know, we do have a setup. We have a structural design for our show. So we will have our uh, our dance tune, which if you haven't heard it, it is Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy from 2009. Um, By the Andrew Sisters. The Andrew Sisters. And I'm so excited because I think this kind of like brings in that vibe of like, the old style, which especially mm-hmm. with the with the Southerners going to Normandy next year, uh, for the um, the oh, 80th. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, oh they're my going, god! So uh, the Southerners are going to the 80th anniversary D Day uh, in Normandy next year in 2024. That is such a good correlation. I didn't make it. See. You got to think about these things. So I'm excited. I think it's a it, it's a classic dance tune. I, I think the uh, I think it's going to be a really good opportunity for one of the trumpet players to have a really good solo. Um, now for the woodwinds to be featured. Yes. Now I really am excited for the for our ballad. I'm I'm not a big fan of Over the Rainbow. It, it, it's it's oh, a, hold your tongue, sh- bite your tongue. Let me let me finish. Okay. It's an iconic song. It is, but. What I'm excited about is the I'll Fly Away sequence. And that's because for me, when I was trying to decide where I wanted to go to college, um, I listened to this show. It was my very first collegiate show I had listened to up to this point. 
um, when I got into high school and I heard it at my band competition. They played it just seeing the Southerners, the way that they moved, the way that the uh, ballerinas and the color guard were all involved in this show just really inspired me to want to get back into being a Southerner. And so I'm excited for that. I don't know about Brandon. Um, I love I'll fly away. Oh, and, and it's not my favorite ballad, but it's one of my favorites. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to hear well, what, what this new arrangement is going to sound like. Plus, I, I think the one thing that I am, I mean, you got to think about it. You can't have Southerners without I'll Fly Away. And it's right. kind of like just the piece de resistance to Dr. Botterford. Okay. like well, I bet you it was between this and Elsa's because there was a mix in that arrangement that had mm-hmm. Salvation and Elsa's. Right. So I, I bet you it was between those two. Right. And so I'm I'm excited for that. And of course, you can't you can't have a Southerner show without going back to the classic song, Malaguena, or in the words of um of our famous Argentinian friend that is uh an amazing pianist. Uh he says Malaguena. Um, well, that's so, the technical, the technical correct. name, but we're going to call it Malaguena because we're from the South. Um, but the last time we heard this, uh, the first one of the first times we heard this song was 95. The last the time wedge. We heard, when we started the wedge, the, the triangle. Um, and then the last time was uh, in actuality, it was one of my last shows um, when I was a Southerner um, in 2018. Uh, which mm-hmm. I'm excited for. Um, I'm excited to watch the that wedge. Was our, again. That was our next to last show. It was our next to last show because in 2019 is when we had Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, so I'm excited. I think this is fantastic. I think this is a great setup. I think this is a great. Um, I think this is a great gift to Dr. Mm-hmm. Potterford because if you've been living under a rock, the theory is that. This could be it. This could be Dr. Botterford's last year. Um, and that he wanted. We don't know. Because we thought we thought he was retiring after 25, which was 2019. Yeah. yeah. And or so. 18. It was 18. It was we thought he was retiring after 18. After um, uh, when I think of home. Um, and so we don't know yet. That's the theory. There's there's moving balls and chains on this um but no matter what you can't have southerners without dr botterford for Mm -hmm. many of the southerners that have been around since 95 as uh as the original director is to the original band members this is now like he is ours so you know it's just as as my mom and dad called dr walter's papaw he dr botterford is our papaw Exactly. He is our papa and he will always be a part of this program and, and, and his impact. Whoever takes over that band, um, whoever takes over the program after Dr. Botford have some big shoes to fill. Exactly. I don't, yeah. if it's who I think it's going to be, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Well, if I think I know who it is too, if we're both thinking of the same person, then it should be too hard. Basically the legacy will just, carry on (laughs) it's just nothing will stop it'll be the same thing as it's always been you just won't have that small everyone knows who we're talking about it's funny um but you just won't have that small little snippet of grace in the middle of band camp uh when when we all wanted it and and dr botterford was there to be like oh yeah you're like let's let's go get you those uh freeze pops like or out of nowhere, just say, we're giving you tomorrow off. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so to all the future Southerners that are listening to the show, I'm sorry. You may never get another day off. <laughs> but we sorry. love we, we love you guys. But I'm excited. We're all excited. I will definitely be watching that show um, and just. I'm oh, I'm, I'm going to cry multiple times. I Every time I see you the I will be at southerners reunion this year i if, if by god i will make it and i want to watch this last show um but enough said we have to get back into sports so let's dive into the start of the season for our softball team which overall has not been bad 
Um, it was a good weekend. It, it, it was, was a good weekend. It was a very good weekend. So as far as our um, as far as our softball uh, games have gone, so we did play Army and Buffalo. Um, we did beat Buffalo nine to zero. We did beat Army. 7 to 2, we beat them again 11 to 3 and then we did end up losing that last game against Buffalo 5 to 7. Um but again, two of those games were from were by mercy rule. Oh yeah. So it ended after 5 innings, which is it's kind of great when you're thinking about it, but this is a great way to start, especially against uh-huh. we're we're not talking about like A Sun teams. We're not talking about like smaller uh, collegiate teams. We're talking about like big name teams. Mm-hmm. We're talking about FBS and we're talking about uh independent team or Patriot. Patriot. League. Yeah. Patriot League. But so, still it's the service academy. So right. So the fact that we were able to successfully beat these teams um within the f- uh fifth innings, you know, mercy rule, that's that's just great. I'm I'm very happy about that. Um now our time is not over. Um, we obviously will have some more uh, games coming up if you haven't been paying attention. Uh, our next one is the Southern Miss Golden Eagle Classic, uh, where we will have uh, Southern Illinois. Say it. No, say I, it. Want, I want you to say, say it. it. No. Do you not know it? No, I do know it, but you're the one that was cutting me off the last time. Yeah, because you were stopping at Southern Illinois and just calling it. That is a completely different college, sir. Well, that was your job was to catch me on it. Why do you think it was like this? Southern, Southern Illinois, Illinois Edwardsville. Edwardsville. See, I know what I'm doing. Uh huh. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, so we get uh, so in the Southern Miss. Uh, Brandon loves me. Don't let him fool you okay so in the golden eagle classic we will have southern illinois edwardsville we will have tulsa and alcorn um and of course southern miss um which we kind of already talked about our predictions for this um i believe for the most part none of these should be a problem i think southern miss and tulsa may give us a little bit more of a run for our money um but overall i would like to see us go either two uh two and two for the teams if not at least sweep it yeah i think it it'll end up being i mean siue and alcorn i don't think we'll have any issues Mm -hmm. uh so that's two wins easily um if i had to pick a loss i would actually pick Tulsa. I don't think we would lose to Southern Miss because we usually play Southern Miss every single year. Mm-hmm. So if they are a familiar foe for softball. So I think we might go three and one. Um, worst case scenario, go two and two and lose to Tulsa and Southern Miss. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we go, I don't think we're going to sweep. Um, I think we'll go at most three and one with our loss being to Tulsa. I would agree. I agree with that. So definitely be on the lookout um, for what ends up happening. Um, But you just don't know um, until it actually happens. So be on the lookout. I think this is going to be great. Um, And again, way to go, Lady Gamecocks, on the start of your season. Mm -hmm. Let's keep up the good work. Let's uh, redeem ourselves from another uh, group that um, we'll we'll get into later. Um, but flipping over to the men's side of this sport, we'll talk about baseball. Um, so baseball is coming up. Uh, their next games are going to be against Georgia on Friday. It's going to be at 2 p.m. Saturday, it's going to be 1 p.m. And Sunday at 12 p.m. You can find these games on the SEC Network Plus. We've I have my theories on how this is going to go. Um, I've not caught a lot of word on what's going on with the team this year. Um, other than somebody that works for the university, um, his son and him are really big with helping the baseball team. And from what I hear and understand, things look pretty good so far, um, for the team. So I would like to see us go maybe one and two for, uh, one and two for this. If not, let's go two and one, you know, I, I, I know probably somewhere within those three games, we may lose one, but if we can win at least one, that would be great. Um, yeah, Georgia is usually a pretty tough opponent. 
Mm-hmm. They finished just barely over 500 last year. Um, they went to the regionals um, and ended up being one and two in postseason. Mm-hmm. Uh, got to the SEC tournament, lost to Alabama in their first game. Um, we usually play Alabama pretty close. And, and again, it's very hard to like pick the results of these first few games because you're having to go off of last season and this season is not last season. So I'm going to actually say we'll lose the first one. I think we'll slip them up on the second game. Yeah, and I think I'll go with go like you. Lose the first one, win the second one, lose the third one. Mm-hmm. But again, as long as we can get one of those uh, wins, I, I would feel yeah, more comfortable. I, I, will, I will be very happy if we can at least get one one game out of this series. Hey, fool me fool me once and, and win, all, win all of them. I, I mean, it, it would be <clears throat> nice. It would be nice, but I don't think it'll happen. Never know. Um, I mean, it it would be nice, but we just gotta just wait and see. Um, we'll obviously next week we'll update you guys. The plan for next week is that we will actually be going live. Um, that's the Hopefully. plan. Hopefully, that's the plan. Um, we were gonna do it this week, but a lot has been like I'm leaving tomorrow. Um, for three days to go to a thing up in Huntsville. So uh, I'll actually be in Brandon's neck of the woods. Um, I will be busy, so I will not be able to see you. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I will um, be at Bob Jones for the WGI Regional. Who? I will be at Bob Jones for the WGI Regional. Who? Shut up. Okay, anyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about, the the go-to joke with Bob Jones is because at one point nobody knew who they were. Um, so it was who? Bob Jones. Bob who? who? Bob who? Bob Jones. So that that's always been kind of like the, the, the joke about it. Um, but anyways, so um, now let's get into our meat and potatoes. Well, not really. I, I call it more like the... We are weaning the, off of basketball. I'd call it more the well-done steak. Um, yeah, that's right. I'm define. I'm describing our team as a well done steak. Um, let's talk about basketball. So if you weren't catching the games, the last two games were the same teams, Kennesaw State. We talked about this last week. One was at home and one was at Kennesaw State. And it was the same oh freaking I, literally rumble. identical games. <laughs> Literal identical game, same issue, not finishing it, not completing the game, losing by less than In the three. last second. Both games. I last know. second. We lost the first game 54 to 52. And the second game we lost 74 to 71. And it's the same, it's the same problems. So like most of my most of my thoughts, I don't know about Brandon, but most of my thoughts are based on just the the issues in the last game okay um but i'll i'll let brandon go first uh, brandon share share your thoughts with us just just tell us how you feel uh, frustrated <laughs> um that's the biggest thing i don't i'm uh first of all it's kennesaw state how do you lose twice to your rival. Mm-hmm. I can understand if the games were evenly like spaced out, but it was back to back. You were bound to win one of those games. You you were bound to win one of those games. Apparently not. And uh, I love that they carried the energy. Well, granted, Kennesaw State pack pretty much packed out their their uh arena just like we somewhat did. So, like, the energy at both was just, like, high intensity. Like, it was it was tough places to play for both away teams. All right. Um, in the first game, both teams sucked as far as shooting is concerned. 
Uh, free throws was okay. Kennesaw outdid us, uh, 67% to 59%. Um, so I think that's where a lot of that came from. Uh, there was a point where, where's the points off of turnovers? Yeah. Kennesaw had 11 points off of turnovers to our six. Let's go to the next game. Well, our next game, so we had uh, 41% of our three-pointers. Nine out of 22. That's issue which for was, me. Which was fairly decent compared to the last game, as far as three-pointers is concerned. Um, free throws was fairly even between both teams. Um, again, field goals were fairly even against bo- or between both teams. Uh, we out rebounded them, had more assists. We t- did turn the ball over way more than they did. 16 turnovers, hold control the ball, control the freaking ball. It's not hard, it's not hard. I understand there's certain, si- certain, c- certain circumstances like how Alabama did against what well, who was it, LSU, Auburn. Who did they play this weekend? I can't remember. Anyways, Alabama was literally just pouncing on that ball, like they stealing had, it right and left. They had 24 points off of turnovers on that last game. 24! You know what's funnier than 24? Who, Kennesaw, Kennesaw did, yeah. Like, that's ridiculous, man. If you take some of those points away, we, I mean, even in, even in the first game, if you took some of those points away, we would have won the game. Would we though? I don't understand what what are. It, it seems like they can't transition like off of turnovers. It's almost like they can't transition fast enough from offense to defense. That's what the issue seems like to me. Because the def- defense is great. If the defense has time to actually set up and get ready to play, the, go up against the offense, they're great. Mm-hmm. They're awesome. Our offense, not so great. As you can see, because we apparently turn the ball over a lot. So I don't know what the deal is. Um, just hold on. I, I, we can't hold on to the ball, and when we do turn it over, we can't transi- transition fast enough from offense to defense to stop all of these points, or we can't contain them to prevent these points. Like I, I don't know what the deal is. Honestly, I am so happy we are moving on to softball and baseball really quick. So those are my thoughts. I I just, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. We've done what we can. We've supported how we could. Uh, You know, Brandon and I have given more than our fair share of just trying to, trying to hold on, trying to to keep the good hope and keep the fight going for for our team and, and the event that, you know, things would change. And, they're not. And so for me, it's just, it's just hard um, to think about the fact that we, we just can't finish. And I, and at this point I would just say we've already knew it. This year is a bust. Let's mm-hmm. just, let's just move on. We got two more games, right? Two more. No, we have quite a few. We Do have, we? Least, well, I think we have six left doing or five hold on we have five games left oh is it yeah I, we have five okay well we got four we got four games we have four okay yeah. i was looking at the women's so we got queens oh Should- i bet you i bet you that extra game in the women's is who we're matching up against in the tournament yeah so we got which our women's are do, is doing really good. They beat Bellarmine, but they uh, lost to Eastern Kentucky this weekend. But I think they locked up a spot in the tournament. So which would be great. If they did. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But um, 
the boys, they got they got four games. They got Queens, they got Liberty, Central Arkansas, North Alabama. We may win one out of that four. And that's that is where I'm leaving mm-hmm. my final thoughts. I I've I've been hurt enough and I cannot I, I cannot I cannot hold any longer to a belief. So let's see. Queens is sixth, UNA is seventh, Central Arkansas is one. I think we have the possibility of winning three. Mm-hmm. We are not beating Liberty. Ain't no way that's happening. If we beat Liberty, then we're winning all four. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll definitely have to just keep an eye out. That's all we can do at this point. But, Brandon, do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share? Um, I am tired. I have been working my butt off. I feel that. Working... Waking up at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning for my shift every day, or for my job every day, Monday through Friday, it gets tiring. I'm applying for teaching jobs like crazy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm ready for things to kind of, like, get solidified. I feel that. I feel that in my bones. Well... We love you guys, and we appreciate y'all listening. We we wanted to keep this episode short. It is Valentine's Day, and at least one of us has a has somebody to entertain. Um, um, you can read my mind, <laughs> but we want to thank each and every one of you for listening. And of course, if you haven't already, you need to go ahead and follow us on all of our social media platforms: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, Facebook, we are the only difference is. It is Cocky Nation and JSU Podcast, where we do post a lot of updates. Twitter and Instagram, it's at Cocky underscore Nation. And, of course, you need to go follow Fans Nation Network on Twitter and all of our fantastic podcasts that are involved with these groups because they are talking about their own teams. They're talking about their uh, their current seasons, what's going to happen, what's going to uh, what's going to be different. Uh, some of these uh, podcasts correlate with us, and so – you know, definitely be listening to what they got to say. Who knows? Maybe one of them will talk, uh, start talking smack about us and then we'll have to go live with them. Who knows? Um, but we don't know. We'll see. We love you guys. Thank you for listening. Go Gamecocks and fear the beak.